Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. I'm wearing you in a globe again, guys. What am I going to be doing? I'm actually going to be trying to recreate Roger's racket today. So I know the specs from his actual racket here. I got my own little version of a Roger racket here. That's not his, but since I know what his is and the specs of it, I'm gonna try to recreate it. The same weight, the same balance, the same swing weight. So what am I gonna to need today? Well, I'm gonna need a racket. So this is the Pro Staff RF 97, the first gen, as you can see with the colors, right? So I'm gonna cut the strings out, remove the head guard, change this grip, right? So what do I need today to do this? Well, I got my lead tape. This is a quarter inch lead tape that's gonna be going on the head guard. So instead of me having to cut the half inch, this is already pre-cut to a quarter inch. I got new head guard, since I'm gonna have to rip out the old one. Um, Pro Staff RF. 97 all right when i string it i'm gonna need that leather pad because you know roger uses that leather pad under those first six mains so i got that to cut up i got the champ's choice which is his string right i got i don't have his his stringalings though i don't have his stringalings but i have a lasto cross Right, so that I can actually try to replicate that part of it. I got leather grip, right? Which I'm gonna replace the synthetic grip with. I got a pro over grip here, which is what I'm gonna put over the leather grip. Um, at the end, I'm actually gonna stencil it with a W in red, okay? So hopefully, all this will get me close to Roger's racket. The only thing I didn't know uh, and couldn't find out because Roger's butt cap down here, uh, I couldn't remove. There was no trap door. So it was probably some kind of custom pallet with a head with a butt cap that doesn't need a trap door or doesn't have a trap door. Um, we also know that his butt cap is more rounded. Like these are more squared off and sharper. So we know that for a fact, but I'm gonna try to get it as close to spec as possible. And then the last thing I do will be to see if this needs um, silicone in the handle. So everything will be done perfectly right to what i saw and hopefully all it will need is silicone in the butt here okay that hopefully right this could be either a huge success or a huge failure but we're gonna try it today okay so hold tight so first thing i gotta do is strip this racket down uh, cut the strings out of it so this is a four and three eighths just like what Roger said his is, a 3 8. So this was, this particular one was modified at some point because, um, you know, the leather has been taken off and the sublime grip is on here now. So we're moving the strings. Taking the grip off. Let's see if there's anything under the grip. Nope, nothing. Good. That'll make it easier for me. Okay. I'll put the leather grip on first since I'm here. I'm gonna have to 
probably snip that some of those grommets off the top there. I still think this is the best pro staff out of all of them. It's not, I don't, I don't like the red and black so much, but um, I like it. I like it more. It's got a better feel to it. When they painted it all black uh, and added that matte finish to the racket, for some reason, it muted that racket out. Uh, it felt like there were more dampeners on it. I'm just putting the leather on. Like, If you've never put a leather grip on, it's all about tension. You got to really tension it. Like what I'm doing. Like I'm actually pulling this. Not as tight as I can. But I'm kind of 90% there. Because you really. It's going to. It's hard to stretch this stuff out. doesn't feel right what I was going after was a uh, more of a flat feel and that felt rigidy to me No, there's something wrong with this grip. I'm gonna change the grip out. This just doesn't feel right. Let me see if I can, maybe it's the way I'm doing it. No, the grip is bad. I'm going to get another grip. Got another leather grip here. I'm not sure what was wrong with that grip, but it, it didn't sit right. Maybe it was too old. Because um, the, the edges on it didn't quite line up very well. Like, I, like when I gripped it, it, I could feel the overlaps. And you don't want to feel the overlaps, especially on a leather grip, because it'll it'll make it more uh, defined when you put on a a replacement an overgrip on there. It's all about the tensioning here in the beginning. Yeah, that's way better. Yeah, well, this one, like, the seams disappear. And you don't feel the... Yeah, that's flat. That's flat. All right, the other one, I felt like the overlaps. Like, no matter what I did, it didn't work. So... Yeah, that's flat. Get a scissor. Yep. I'm not, maybe the other one just cut wrong. Uh, the flap and where they put the stickiness of the grip was was cut in the wrong place. This one is way better. too much so I'm actually see see that 
edge right there. I want it to line up right there like that. I mean, it's probably gonna be okay. I'm gonna just trim off a little bit more. Since we're trying to be very precise here today. Yeah, there is a kind of an art to this. You, uh, like I, I knew immediately that grip wasn't gonna work. Like it just didn't sit right. So that sits way better. See, it ends right where it's supposed to end. So I'm gonna cover that now and then go with the tape. Okay, so there's your leather. The pro overgrip here, I'm looking to see where I started. So since I started the leather grip there and it came back around over here, I'm gonna start it on this side. So it's a little flatter and I'm going to even it out a bit because it's going to overlap right back there to there, right? So now I'm going to do my thing here. Might be putting a little too much tension on there, but there there and sit a little better so okay see I did a video on how to do a perfect overgrip if you want to catch that one uh, it's down it's down one of my first videos here I am at the end see so so see where the leather ends right there I kind of want it to come maybe a hair more over in the end right there so I put my thumb there and that's where I'm going to trim Go on top of the garbage can As I always say, low to the, from the butt to the head when you cut. Cut like that, okay? You want this nice, beautiful edge to finish you up. Okay. So here I am, finishing up again. Okay. Okay. There we are. That feels pretty good already. All right, next, I'm gonna take off the, the head guard. So what am I doing when I take out the head guard? I use the butt of uh, the handle of an right here. So I just push up like that. I push up like that, right? It's just from years of me doing this that I figure these little tricks out. And then when this pops up, I just stick them all in and I start doing that, right? Like that. All right. So I, I go to the farthest I can and I start ripping, right? There it is. Okay, nice and clean up top. I know that it's second main from the end to second main on the end from doing the Roger video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it here. So I'm gonna get the head guard that I just took off and mark it. So I know cross, cross, main, cross, 
this is second mean right there. So I'll mark it right there. I'll go to the other side. Cross, cross, that's a main. Cross, main, right there. It's right here. Okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do, start to let it up. There to there. So that one piece. You can do this at home too if you want with your racket. Just make sure you got a spare head guard. Because usually that original old head guard will not go back on. So I go as close to the line as possible there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's that one right there half of there so that mark is needs to be there that mark i was a little off there it's this one right here and there's about half the grommet hole so cut right there there perfect okay so i'm going to take more and I'll do it again Right there. I usually go a little bit more than normal, maybe by half an inch to an inch, uh, just in case you don't want to be short here. So I go back to where I was. Just make sure I line it up perfectly here. Just like so. And then at the end, it should be right about there. Perfect. I'll show you the finished product. So that's what it looks like, right? So half inch, half inch. Got the head guard, racket's ready to go. Line up the holes first and do so like so. I'm not gonna force anything in, okay? I'm just gonna finger my way through this. Like just try to get as much in as I can without using this too much. Looks like it's getting tight here already. There. So all I'm doing is just guiding it in the hole while I'm holding it with this left thumb here.
So I always kind of line it up and then I go ahead one just to line that up. So it kind of stretches out a bit. in we got it in uh, we got it in perfectly so the key to the head guard this particular head guard is guide it guide it guide it guide it once you get to one of these holes that are nice and fat which is the tie hole right don't force those if you force those you're going to widen those if you widen those they will never go in so uh Stretch it on one side, flip it around, stretch it on the other side. But don't force those grommets in there or else you're going to have to be buying another one. Let's mount it on the string, stringing machine and, uh, and start stringing with Roger's strings. Okay, let's go right here. So 25.5 kilos is what that one is. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. If you guys have ever wondered what the power pad does, it kind of acts like a dampener. Um, it softens up uh, the string bed and takes a little bit of the vibration out. Um, you ever wonder why Roger doesn't use a dampener? It's probably because he uses power pads. Another person that used power pads was uh, Pete Sampras. Um, his, his reasoning for using power pads, aside from maybe dampening, is to keep it from breaking so fast because he used to string them at 70 pounds with 17 gauge natural gut. So, um, the, the, at the mains, you wanted to keep that little circle thing or else it would kind of cut through on these uh, grommet edges. So that, that made it break prematurely. I mean, it still broke prematurely because it was strung at 70 pounds. Alright, so what am I gonna do? So I'm gonna take, so it's just it's a leather strap. You can buy these on Amazon. A long, long it's like a leather lace, is what it is. It's a uh, kind of uh, has a smooth finish on one side and it's kind of raw on the other. So it's kind of like uh, fixing baseball gloves. If you've ever done that before, you, you would use these to kind of tie baseball gloves together. Or I, I don't know what else people use them for, but there's various uh, various things that it, it's good for. It is leather, okay? It is leather. So I'm just gonna quickly measure there, do a thing, and then just cut what I need off. It's gonna be about there. So, about that much, okay? I like to put the um, this part on the outside, the smooth part on the outside. Go any further, make sure my insurance is in. Okay, so, so I pop that out a bit, slide that in. Let it take hold. Okay. All right. So I center it, right? So I'm going to hold it right there. And I'm going to pull my first main.
Okay, see it centered. Second one. Another power pad piece. Might be too generous. Take a little off. in there a bit more. Okay. Oop. See that slipped off. Got to be very careful. it in. Make sure it's flat and flushed. Okay. Okay. Let's see if that holds. That holds. Okay. So I'm going to string one ahead just to prepare that one. So I'm going to pull this one so I can get that off. So this is the last main I'm going to do with the uh, power pads on. Trim it a bit more. Check, we're good. Now, I've known, I know that certain people actually put power pads over here too, on these right here, but Roger doesn't. So I'm just gonna finish stringing this racket and then we'll get get back to you, okay? So just finished stringing Roger's racket. Or what would be close to Roger's racket. Power pads on. 
stringings nice and tight. Ooh, that's actually pretty tight. 25.5 kilos is 56.1 pounds. So, wow. it's fresh off the machine, feels tight. What we're gonna do is add some stringlings. Savers, Elasto Cross. The only thing I couldn't match was his stringlings. I, I think those, I wonder if Wilson makes any. The only thing I could, the only thing I had were these uh, Babolat ones. So, let's try to line it up so I can get going on these. Okay. Put them in queue here. Fourth cross down, right? And then fourth main across. So four by four is number one. Four, down, four, across, one, two, three, four, is right there. So right there is my first one. We're gonna lift it up, drop it in, one, and then every other one. Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's all he does there. And then on the next one, he does. Looks like the opposite starting on. Oh, he skips a line and he goes down and he skips one. So which tells me he skips this line here, but then he presumes here, this one. Double check. That's the one, okay. There. 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 So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So one more right here. And looks like that's it for the stringling. It's like the stencil under the fifth fifth cross, about halfway down that fifth cross. When you stencil, very important, don't press down so hard. You press down on this ink thing, all this ink is just gonna shoot out of there. So important just to, you know, just to good, just, just, just like you're, you're uh, you know, you got a marker in your hand and you're just putting it on a piece of paper because that's all you need to do. go right w leave that in there to dry all right and put it on the counter okay so far so good right so what should i do next i'm pretty much done except I just need to see how far off I am now. So I'm gonna have to take it out of the case and, and see where it is. Uh, my guess is that since that's a custom palette, that there might be weight under there. I couldn't open it to see. So if anything needs to be changed on this racket, my guess is silicone in the handle. That's my guess. 
and that would probably be the easiest thing to do. If that is not the case, this will be a huge fail, okay? So uh, I'm gonna clean this up and then uh, open the racket and go quickly compare and see how far I'm off. All right, hang tight. All right. So both rackets are ready. Let's analyze. Let's see if I'm close. We got Roger's racket out, out of the case. Three fifteen on the balance. Lands three eighteen. So we're off already. Let's see. Uh, let's go to the scale. All right, at the scale, I got Rogers first. Three sixty five point five. Let's see. Let's see what the swing weight is. Three hundred forty six. See if I'm close. Three sixty three point five. All right. See what the swing weight is. Okay. All right, so let's go analyze. Okay, so this is Roger's racket right here. 365.5 in the weight. I'm at 363.5, okay? That's fixable. The balance, 315 versus 318, that's a question mark. I'm not sure if I can get there. Um, this at 346 and that at 350 on the swing weight, um, that's going to be questionable too. So what I'm going to do now, uh, and this is what I thought would happen, is that I'm going to have to inject silicone into that butt cap. Uh, now I gotta figure out how much to add will be um, the good amount. I mean, easiest thing would be two grams because that'll get me to that number, uh, but will it get me to these numbers? So uh, we'll, I guess we'll see, we'll, we'll try it out, okay? Stay tuned.